Hey everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am beyond excited that you are joining me on McCarthy Math 155. You know what? You are the reason that I am here. My mission is to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for you. But you know what? You play a role in this too. Your job is to make sure that you are plugged in into every single lesson. So come on, let's go ahead and jump right into the Mathematical Mindset Creed to get our minds right. This is a safe place to make mistakes. Mistakes help me learn and grow. I am a hard worker. I stick with it until I get it. I am brave. I take charge of my learning. I ask questions when I don't understand. When in doubt, I draw it out, if possible and it's always possible to work it out. I respect and actively listen to the ideas of others. We are ready to learn. Alrighty then, let's get to it and let me teach ya. Hello everybody and welcome to day 31 of McCarthy Math 155. This is the fifth grade edition. Today we are on day 31 and we are writing numerical expressions. So they changed the written expression to numerical expressions, just like we did in day 30. Let's go ahead and get started by annotating this. So it says, subtract well that's obvious subtract 4 from 16 which means that we're going to do 16 minus 4 make that a little more obvious because we're taking if here's 16 we're taking 4 from it we got to subtract 4 that's step number 1 then we are going to double that means 2 times the difference and the difference is what we're subtracting okay and finally so that was step number two number two is to double the difference and number three is to add 25 okay so let's go ahead and get started so first we need to subtract 4 from 16 so I'm just gonna place 16 minus 4 first how can we ensure that we're doing it first we can throw parentheses around it, right? Then we are going to double the difference. So I'm gonna take this and multiply this difference by two. And finally, we are going to add 25. So this would be one way that you could write it. You could also do two times 16 minus four plus 20. Five. And I believe those are the best two ways without getting y'all confused of what you could do for those two problems, okay? So let's go ahead and try number two. It says half the sum of nine and five added to 18. So we're taking half of the sum, half of the sum, which means we're adding something. What are we adding? The sum of nine and five, so that would be nine plus five added to 18. So we need half of the sum of what two numbers? Nine and five. And then we are going to do what? Add 18. Another way that we could do this would be to do nine plus five times one half plus 18 because we're still finding half of the sum and then we're adding 18. Okay, go ahead and give number three a try and then come on back when you're ready to check your work. All right, everybody, we are back with number three. Let's go ahead and see how you did. It says triple the sum of six and 12 subtract the sum of four and two. So let's break it down. It seems like a lot attacking us at once, but if we break it down, we can help it make sense. So triple, what does that mean? Yeah, three times. We need to take the sum and make three times the sum of six and 12. So for sum is six and 12, so we need to make sure it's a sum of that. So we need to throw those in parentheses. And then we need to subtract 
the sum of four and two. So let's go ahead and start messing around with this and see how we get it. So we're gonna go ahead and triple three times the sum of six and 12. And we're going to subtract the sum of four and two. Let's make sure that makes sense. Triple the sum of six and 12, triple the sum of six and 12, subtract the sum of four and two. That totally makes sense. So you just have to break it down. And you know what? Let's go ahead and solve this one. Let's do a throwback to what we learned already. So of course we would do what first? Parentheses first, this set right here because we're going from left to right. What is six plus 12? It is 18. All right, and bring everything down. Three times 18 minus four plus two. What's our next step? Take care of this set of parentheses, good, which is six, four plus two is six. So now we have three times 18 minus six. I'm just gonna move this six down right here. All right, so what do we do next? Three times 18, multiplication comes before subtraction. So 18 times three. Three times one is three. Plus two is 54. 54 minus six is what? 48, good. All right, so of course we did not have to solve this. This is not what the problem was asking us to do. Really it was just asking us to do this part right here, which was writing the written expression into numerical expression. And then we just did an extra little throwback skill of solving it. Okay, go ahead and try number four and number five on your own and then come on back when you are ready to check your work. All right, everybody, let's do number four and number five. <laughs> All right, the product of four and two subtracted from 1,000. So the product, what are we looking for here? Yeah, the total is when we multiply. What are we multiplying? We're multiplying four and two. So the product of four and two subtracted from 1,000. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put four times two, the product of four and two, and let's see what you did. Subtracted from 1,000. So did you write one thousand minus four times two or did you write four times two minus one thousand yeah if you're taking if it says subtracted from one thousand that means we have one thousand and we got to take it from it so the four times two needs to be taken from the one thousand so you should have made it this one right here, okay? Not this one. But we could have written this without using parentheses. I prefer it with parentheses just because it makes sense. But you could have written it like this, 1,000 minus four times two, because we would have to do multiplication first, right? All right, make sure you are checking your work as I go. If you made any mistakes, go ahead and, and rewrite it. Jot down your mistake in your notes for growth. Let's try it, number five. One third of the product of six and six multiplied by four, woo! Let's break it down. One third, how could I write that? All right, one over three. One over three. One third of, multiply, one third of the product, means we're gonna multiply something of six and six, so what are we doing with those two? Yeah, we are multiplying six and six, multiplied again by four. Okay, let's break it down now. We have one third of the product of six and six. We're doing that first, 
multiplied by four. So this could have been written like this or like this, but I definitely would have kept the parentheses around the six and six because it's saying the product of that and then multiplied by four. Okay, so either one of those would work. Check your work, write it down if you made a mistake and we will continue to practice some more of this on day 32. I think we're switching gears just a little bit, but I will see you all on day 32.